from this to this. Boom. Yes guys, what's going on? It's Dan and Tom here from the thetabletennisdailyacademy.com and in today's video we're going to teach you five tips to produce killer spin in table tennis. Yes, definitely Dan, let's get started then. Now spin is the number one factor to really take your game to the next level. It sure is Tom, I mean you can have the fastest forehand in the world, but if you're not producing spin with that forehand, it's not going to have the quality, safety and consistency. Now five key tips here Tom, you ready? Yeah, let's get straight to tip number one. Tip one all starts from the ground up. Now a lot of players think to produce spin comes from the arm and wrist, whether you're doing a backhand flick or a forehand top spin. However, if you're not staying nice and low and using good weight transfer, you can be very limited to the amount of spin you can get because the arm on its own is not enough acceleration and power. You wanna be nice and low. If we take Timo Ball, for example, one of the spinniest players right now on the circuit, he's super low to the table in all his shots. Whether that's a push, backhand flick, backhand open up, he's always low, good bend in the knees, and that allows him to get the acceleration. It's like a whipping action where the legs and body accelerate first, the trunk turns, good weight transfer and then the arm comes in at the last minute and that's where that acceleration comes from to brush the ball. So the legs is absolutely fundamental in producing lots of spin in table tennis. Now if I just do some top spins upright, not bending my legs, let's see how much spin I can get. It's very difficult, it's hard, you don't have much motion, it's very hard to get that whip and brush. Now if I bend my knees, let's look at the difference, staying nice and low. Now I can weight transfer in the ball and really spin the ball and get behind it. Nice. So see that I was able to produce a lot more spin because I was, as I said earlier, the whipping action, using my legs and body to rotate into the ball and then the arm comes in at the last moment of impact to brush the ball and get that spin. Okay, so tip number two is brushing the ball and learning to get this correct contact which allows you to develop the spin. Now brushing the ball is really important because it allows the rubber to do its work and create that friction which will generate a lot of spin. Absolutely, so the drill we're gonna do here Tom, a really nice drill, I'm gonna roll the ball along the table and Tom's gonna brush lightly to get the ball over onto the net, it's a really good one. That's a tough one, very good Tom. An excellent drill this. See how he's having to really just stroke the ball, that nice light stroke, another one on the backhand. Lovely, using that wrist there, lightly contacting the ball. And that's what we want to emphasize, to get this brushing contact, you do have to be relaxed and allow the rubber to do its work. You are looking for a fine contact, being very light on the ball. If you're too heavy with the contact, you're not going to generate that brushing contact that will create a lot of spin. And if you are really struggling, start with your bat actually at the table and then just go upwards. So just have a look at that, if you just yeah, roll that to, it my, avoids you. to my forehand. Yeah. So you can start here and then just, just simply yeah. go up, straight up. Yeah. up. So there's no way you're gonna hit the table there. Yeah. It's a nice and safe way to start learning that contact. Okay, so another great drill is simply get a bottle, and this helps with a backhand flick or shots over the table, but yep. at the same time, helps you master the brushing action and understand the concept. So Tom, take it away. So what we're trying to do is brush the ball off the top of the bottle without knocking it over. So if you don't get that brushing contact and you're too thick, what will happen is you'll hit the ball, but you'll knock the bottle over as well. So what we're looking for is that brushing light contact, nice fine touch on the ball, and brushing it over without letting that bottle fall down. Tom, no pressure. Right, here we go. So nice. that's what we're looking for. So that does teach you that real, really having the closed bat to lightly brush across the ball and generate that spin. So if you take a look at Tom here, he's brushing the ball and using his wrist, which is an integral part, which allows him to generate more spin. It's important that the wrist is relaxed and releases forward to generate the extra spin and quality on the shots. Okay, so tip number three is all about feeling and control and bringing this brushing action into your strokes. So to work on this feeling and develop spin, we're gonna do one backhand and one forehand top spin. What we're looking for is brushing the ball nice and lightly like Tom was doing in tip two, but we're looking for feeling, and feeling is simply keeping the ball on the bat for a long period of time, making it dwell and sink in, that's gonna help the ball grip into the sponge and get the spin. Now a common error we see is players hitting the ball too thick when they're top spinning, and that means the ball doesn't have enough time to grip onto the rubber to get the spin. Hitting it too flat is not gonna get you that spin, so brushing the ball. So one backhand, my forehand, nice and light, Stay nice and low, low like from tip one. And we're just rushing the ball, developing that finesse and feeling. Now, if I do hit the ball too thick, it's harder to control. We're not gonna get much spin at all. I mean, the shot's not bad, but in terms of consistency, 
will be able to get that quality on the ball and spin. So take the pace off it, brush the ball nice and lightly and make sure your angle's relatively closed, not too open, as not help you get the spin. Okay, so tip number four is the start position and the angle of your bat. Now, whatever shot you're playing, whether that's a push, a flick or a topspin, the bat angle needs to be correct to actually generate the spin. So the more closed you are, for example, with a forehand topspin, the more you can brush across the top of the ball, like we spoke about in tips two and three. Now, obviously, you've got more margin for error with a flatter bat angle, but that doesn't allow you to generate spin. So if you're getting spin, you've got to get that flatter closed bat angle or a more open bat angle to brush underneath the ball on push shots. So if we take a look at a slow motion example here with the backhand flick, you can see on the left hand side, my bat angle is too open, which means I can't come in and brush the ball and generate spin. It means I'm trying to lift the ball over the net rather than brush it. Now on the right hand side, I'm stepping in with a much more closed bat angle, which allows much better grip and purchase on the ball and gives you that spinning contact that we're looking for. Tip five guys, this is the exciting part where we try and develop tons of spin. Now we only go on to this part once we've developed all the basic mechanics, you've got the feeling using good legs. And this part, this tip is acceleration. Acceleration and racket speed with the light touch is what develops the spin. Yeah, that's right. Now a key thing with acceleration is that we maintain all the other elements from the previous tips. A common error we see is players actually try and accelerate more, but they forget to brush the ball and have that nice feeling and the correct bat angle. So when you accelerate, you've got to keep all these things together and that's when you'll be able to generate really high amounts of spin. So if we go back to, um, I'll do a backspin serve, Tom, yep. push my forehand, I'm gonna try and get good speed and spin at the same time. Okay. So you can see there, I really accelerated fast, good legs, good body, and my arm snapped into the ball, and that's what got that spin and speed. Really quick acceleration in the point of contact as well. There's no point in having a quick acceleration, but by the time you hit the ball, the bat's slow. So we're looking at acceleration in the contact area. That's really key. Also, if you notice there, with that extra acceleration, Dan was able to get the ball deeper in the table, and that's what spin can do. It can give your shot a lot more depth and make it awkward for the opponents. Let's take a look at some of these different spin shots in slow motion. We can see how much we are both using our wrists to generate that extra acceleration and brush through the ball to get that high spin contact that we're looking for. The wrist is a vital part to allow us to be relaxed and get that light contact on the ball to produce tons of spin. So there we go guys, there was five tips to improve your spin with your stroke play. It was indeed, so give those tips a practice and that will really help. Now here at the academy, we've also recently teamed up with one of the best servers in the world, Pear Garel, to create a service masterclass to add more spin to your serves. So be sure to check that out in the links below. Absolutely. And guys, let us know in the comments on other ways you find you can develop spin in your game. For now, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.